Hi everyone, I'm speaking to you on the cusp of Fashion's Night Out. In fact, I'm in a car with my pals Leah and Brad, and we're going to our Kate Spade Broom Street store for a book signing and a window installation competition. It's a very Project Runway-like. Um, and I just wanted to report in on last night's show, which was last night's show, um, the Michael Kors Challenge, which I, I, I thought was great. I love resort wear, but why we had to spend three hours on that boat for 30 seconds on, on TV, I do not know. We were all burned to a crisp. Um, it was hot as blazes. There was no breeze on the river. It was beautiful, but it was hot and long. And all I wanted to do was get the designers to mood, get them to the workroom, and get to work. So there are a few things I want you to know that probably the producers won't want me to, you to, to have you know. But when I heard about this challenge, loved the topic, but the way in which it was going to be done, there would be teams of two. Each team, there are ten designers, each team would make one garment. We'd have five garments walk the runway. One team member would work on the garment for an hour, while the other team member is resting in the designer's lounge. Then they would flip-flop back and forth, back and forth, every, every hour alternating. I thought, this is ridiculous. It's a game show stunt, and there's no corollary to what happens in the fashion industry. So if you hated last night's challenge, or at least the structure of it, you have me to blame. Because I said, if you want a corollary, of course, all this is happening at 6 a.m. the morning of the, the, the challenge is being presented. God forfend that I know anything in advance. Um, I said, if you want a corollary to what happens in the fashion industry, it would be just what we did on the show. One designer executes the other designer's design work. Um, so they're a sample room, and they're a designer, but not of their own work. So then guess what happened next? One thing I was excited about was that this trading off was an opportunity for each designer to work with a different model. You may have noticed they've had the exact same model all season. So I go into the workroom after the model fitting has happened and after my first critique, and Gretchen tells me that their models have switched, and I thought, oh, the poor dear, she doesn't get it. Of course you're working with a different model, I said to her. I said, and she said, no, you don't understand. She said, I have my model. I said, what? You should have Casanova's model, and he should have yours. I know, but when mm, came in to tell us that the models were here, I, I do that, but a producer comes in later, or moments later, that person said, this, you are using this model. I said, so I left the workroom, I went to the production office, and I said, what happened? The opportunity is now gone. Furthermore, for the judges and the audience, it's going to be very confusing. Gretchen's look will, or Gretchen's, the, the work that Gretchen did, the, the construction work will be on her model. There will be an assumption that it's her design, but it's not. So if you tune in late, you've really had it. But the, the fitting had already happened, so we couldn't go backwards. So the next morning, I'm in the production room first. I'm looking at the designers on the monitors. They've been in the workroom for five minutes. I'm about to go in and give them the run of the day, which you all know. And I'm looking at the monitors and asking the fabulous director, Craig, and his AD, Anna, why are the designers moving around like molasses? This is so odd. And they said, well, they're waiting for you to come in and tell them that they get their garment back, their design back, and that they have the rest of the morning to work on it. I said, what? Oh, yes, someone went into the workroom last night when they were leaving to say, don't worry, Tim's going to tell you tomorrow that you get your garment back. I said, well, Tim's not doing anything of the kind. I said, this whole challenge is about not touching that garment. So now they're going to get it back for two and a half hours? I said, this is ridiculous. I said, furthermore, wouldn't this have been a twist? Why would anyone tell them the night before so they have all night to think about, what can I add, what can I subtract, I'll put on a little jacket, I'll take all these stitches out, I'll redo this, and how do the judges judge it? And how does the audience understand it? I said, this is preposterous. So they said, well, you have to talk to our Uber executive producer, she won't be here until whatever. I said, the designers have got to get to work because we're not going to change the time of the judge's arrival on the runway show. Look, I'm already getting hot and bothered all over again. <laughs> So I said, I'm going into the workroom to talk to the designers. So I went marching in. I knew, well, this will all be edited out. And it was, of course, because it's not appropriate. 
Um, we don't want to show that we've had a terrible mistake. Of course, I'm here talking to you about it, but it's only in a matter-of-fact way. Um, so I said to the designers, I understand what you heard last night, and I'm here to tell you that I believe it is a profoundly bad idea. And I don't want to do it. I want you to stick with what you're doing now. Continue this trajectory. Well, they applauded. They were so hugely relieved. So I thought, thank goodness, that, that hurdle's over. But why do we have to go through these things? At any rate, I'm very sorry about Casanova. Someone had to go. I'm not going to talk about the crack-smoking judges. I promised I wouldn't. So that said. Um, and I'm thrilled for April. I re really am. I'm delighted. And a new villain has appeared on the scene. Welcome, Ivy. So Gretchen has some competition. <laughs> so I'm headed off to Kate Spade. We're sitting in traffic. Fashion's night out is Fashion's night stopped. Um, and I will check in with you later. Love you. Bye.